While the IPCC AR6 Working Group 2 report provides a comprehensive review on the scientific understanding of impacts, adaptation, and vulnerability, these findings require, as they mentioned, urgent action. This morning, we also have invited representatives from various local actors to give us their thoughts and insights on what living in a code red world and what appropriate adaptation may look like. Our first discussant is Mr. Jerome Ilagan. Mr. Ilagan is the Chief of the Policy Research and Development Division of the Climate Change Commission. Over to you, po, Mr. Ilagan. Thank you so much, uh, distinguished members of uh, the panel, Dr. Uh, Rex Cruz, Dr. Lasco, Dr. Pulhin, Dr. Rosa Perez, and uh, the ex esteemed colleagues in the discussions panel, uh, Mayor Coro, uh, Ma'am Tony Loizaga, Dean uh, Tony Lavinia, and uh, Ms. Nazrin Castro. We are joined here by distinguished Filipino authors of the assessment report six of the IPCC. And as discussion for the government, uh, we agree and uh, we are reflecting for the systematization of the appropriate response or measures addressing these concerns uh, on climate change, uh, which has nexuses in the totality of human needs and looking at the perspectives or projections, especially the presentation on the impacts on Asia, we might uh, as well uh, go to the, the fundamentals of what national resilience is all about. But allow me to point out uh, several points I've listed down. Number one is science. This uh, report uh, enriches previous questions that would call for more solid answers on the nature of uh, the impacts and of course uh, the perspectives moving forward based uh, on the projected impacts as stated in the report. And one telling theme that has been mentioned is that of maladaptation. As government, we are witnesses to uh, the various policies, projects, activities uh, of uh, national government agencies. And when we look at the profile of uh, local government units, they are also undertaking several actions, addressing their respective uh, vulnerabilities. It cannot be uh, said that the Philippines is not working uh, on climate change action, but what is important is we have to calibrate our perspectives, the fundamental scientific grounding of the government's uh, PAPs, for example, making sure that these are fit for purpose, that these are anticipatory, that they are intended to minimize, uh, avert, or address loss and damage. What are the costs uh, for not doing anything? What is the uh, administrative and political requirement uh, doing so. So uh, in this uh, stage of our uh, history of a country, we are a government in transition. We consider this uh, report as uh, a take of point to really a push forward for reforms uh, in terms of policies, uh, regulations, communication, convergences, and support uh, concerning the various actions that may be perceived to be uh, fragmented or incoherent. So uh, being, being part of the government, we, we leverage on the existing mechanisms like the cabinet cluster systems uh, to, to make a, a solid uh, conversation with decisive uh, action points uh, that should be uh, catalyzing the needed uh, energized from business as usual practices. So being the secretariat as well of the cabinet cluster on CCCOM DRR, this presentation will help uh, our government to go beyond our walls uh, in ensuring that uh, a multi-stakeholder approach 
uh, is uh, being established. The non-government actors are of crucial significance when it comes to uh, mapping out the needed steps. I mean, we do not wait for another a report after some time. And this uh, guidance from science is what we call climate rational already for our government uh, development planning uh, across levels and across uh, sectors. Uh, this should be uh, the meat uh, of, the, of the reform agenda uh, that we should install. The next is uh, on loss and damage as a co-chair of the Warsaw International Mechanism on Loss and Damage, uh, there are certain uh, headways, the establishment of the Santiago Network and uh, the, the conduct, the prospective conduct of uh, Glasgow Dialogue addressing loss and damage when it comes to the question of whether or not there should be separate funding for loss and damage apart from adaptation funding. The Philippines is a good case and uh, we are actually uh, consolidating all the ideas, all the inputs, all the perspectives. We, we note the questions currently raised uh, in this seminar, and these are compelling to inform what should be the government's approach uh, in, this, uh, uh, in these uh, matters. And uh, we highlight the need to prioritize our action given our scant resources, uh, the the reduction of risks and vulnerabilities uh, should be paramount uh, and that should be based on evidence and so what the climate change uh, has been doing for example we we are just applauding the responses from various respondents under the context of the national climate risk management framework we are uh, 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 finalizing the tool for NDC intervention prioritization in as much as uh, the government agencies that have led in the calculation for the mitigation commitments, for example, they have officially submitted the policies and measures, but these are to be subjected to discussion at the commission level and then probably at the cabinet cluster level. So the investments in terms of technology that uh, would benefit both adaptation and mitigation actions uh, to address what we call trade-offs as well. This can be uh, discussed at length uh, in the days to come. So the decoupling uh, between emissions and uh, sustainable development must be emphasized. And there are models actually that demonstrate the plausibility of that approach. And so this is what uh, we are currently working on uh, in the modeling sphere uh, and uh, we thank our government agency partners and inputs from non-government actors to what should be the, the, the role of models for emissions vis-a-vis -vis economic models, vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, uh, trying to uh, systematize local government action. And this is more paramount because of the existence or issuance of Mandana's ruling. So what we have in mind at the moment is to really prepare uh, for mini town hall meetings of the would-be elected local government executives. And we thank the uh, director, uh, Anna Bonago of the ILG is here. She's a constant, lively partner for climate action. We also have uh, USEC Alex Pama. We have uh, our colleagues from the DNR Climate Change Service. We have also in the room some members of the National Panel of Technical Experts, uh, Dr. Nantes, uh, the president of uh, Southern Luzon State University is the NPTE chair and she's also here. So this is a good uh, perspective uh, as government representative in this panel to offer the response. I think what's telling is that uh, the importance of this report uh, can, can be more meaningful if translated into concrete actions. And we thank the organizers for for mounting this. And this is just the beginning or part of the spectrum of continuing engagement, continuing dialogue for uh, instituting more concerted effort so that whole of society and whole of government, we really catalyze change and we reap the benefits from the Paris Agreement that we deserve. Maraming salamat po, mabuhay.